This is the seventh video in the Track Tools Inside 12D model. In this session we're going to be looking at plotting the rails and sleepers, etc. So we'll get the option first of all from Plot, plot Rails from the pull-down menu, alternatively from the Rail Toolbar. We've got the Plot Rails icon over here, a little plotter icon with the rail underneath it. This is the panel that we have in here, so we're going to give this a function name. Now I'm just going to call this Mainline Plot Rails. As we've discussed before, you'd probably have more detail than that in it, uh, in a real job, in that you'd say which particular line you are working on. So for mine, it's just going to be Mainline Plot Rails. You then pick the reference string by picking on the reference button here, select the super alignment, the interval. So we're going to put in here that we want to plot these rails at say a 5 meter interval. When we come down to the height offset here, a couple of things could occur. Um, as I normally design my line on the track center line with the levels for the top of low rail, I would have zero height adjustment in here. But if you've designed on some other portion, maybe you've gone and designed on your formation rather than using this, the track center line top of low rail and using a hinge modifier to drop it down for the formation, then you obviously have to make an adjustment for the, the offset that you would need in there. You'll notice that when I pick the reference string, my start and end change have automatically been filled in for me. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to go and tick on the plot the rail profile. The name I'm going to put in here is going to be Rails. The model that we're going to put it into, I'm just going to go up here and steal that name up here and put it down into there. Remembering you probably have more detail in reality. The color I'm going to go and choose here is to go and use the Viz Steel option, which is down here. If I decide to extrude the rail profile, which I'm going to do here, then what that's going to do is, instead of just giving me the string which is the top inner edge of the rail, which I will still get in this case anyway, when I tick that on, I can then go and choose a rail profile, and that will actually give that shape and extrude it along the line for me. So I'll end up with a string for the rail, but then I'll also have an extruded shape for the rail itself. We'll now move over onto the ballast tab. And on the ballast tab, we're going to go and plot the ballast. In here, I'll give it the name of ballast. That'll be the string name that's created. The sections model, I'm going to go and type cross sect and then put in my name of my line in there again. The strings model, I'm going to go str space control V again. Color for the ballast, I've got a Viz ballast color in here. There it is there. The rail to ballast height in my case, so that is obviously the difference between the rail, the pendrel plates, uh, it's, um, sleepers, etc. So in my case that happens to be minus 0.27, so 270 mils down. I'll give the width for the ballast to be 3.375 and I'll put a side slope of 1 in minus 2 on, on the edge there. Now in here I'm going to have to go in and choose a formation tin so that it can form that up. Now I created one earlier. Um, if I go to my cross section view here, you can actually see in here that I've got a shape in there which is my formation and the capping layer in there which is a tri-mesh. So that all exists in a formation mainline tin. The one thing you'll notice when we look later on is that the slope of 1 and 2, although it's actually calculated, it won't create a tin of that portion for me. Cross onto the sleepers tab. Now, what I normally say here is that unless you are absolutely determined that you have to have the sleepers all the way along the job, I don't recommend doing the plot sleepers because what it does is it goes through and it produces every sleeper for the whole job 
and it does mean that your graphics is going to slow down incredibly and in some cases it's just sort of just not worth the hassle of doing that now if you want to see your sleep and so on then a better way to do it is when you actually run the job through in the end you can go and use one of the visualization macros where we can place the rails and sleepers etc along it across to the bore tunnel here now the bore tunnel option can be used to produce a super string with a user def defined diameter and a vertical offset from the track this produces a circular tunnel and would probably only be used if you're using a tunnel boring machine because it's going to give you a totally circular tunnel if you wished to have a, a tunnel of any other shape than circular then probably the tunnel and structure tools from design tunnel structures would be used instead of the tunnel boring machine which we're discussing here now I will go in and just put it in so we can see actually what it does for us so I'll tick it on I'll give it a name I'll call it tunnel I'll put it into a model of tunnel board give it a color I'll just go and choose something like magenta for it the height above track so that's the offset vertically for the center of it so I'm going to go 2.5 meters there and the diameter that I'll put in there will be 3.25 obviously those are variables that would, would happen through there and remember that um, modeling the formation capping drains etc would normally be done with a ply mini mtf which i haven't done here but i've read in that other tin and capping layer that i had there so we'll now go and hit the recalc function here that's gone through and run the job for us we should now be able to go across to our perspective view I've used a visualization in here to give me uh, textures and colors in this. Um, so we're going to add three new models into here now. So if I come into here, I will add my strings for the main line. So you can see there, these are the individual little strings that we've plotted. We'll see them in a cross section in a minute, moment. We'll then go back into here. We'll add our cross sections for the main line plot rail. So there are our five meter interval cross sections. Um, cross sections running along there and then we'll go and add the uh, main line plot rails and those are the extruded rails running down there so we'll go and have a look at that now in a section view here's our cross section view we'll go and add those same three models in just increase the size of this view a little bit so you can see exactly what's going on and fit it to the view we'll go first of all and add our strings in there so our strings for the main line you'll notice that because we've done the cant option prior to plotting the rails that they have taken the form of the um, of the formation plus applied the cant to that as well and then up here i'll go and add in the main line plot rails and you can see now that we have got those is our formation coming across there with the for the ballast then we've got the rails themselves sitting in there showing us where they'll live so the last thing to see in here then is probably if we come back here and we go down to our board tunnel which i think was called tunnel board there it is there when we go and add that you can see in here that we've now got this tunnel sitting there as i said it would only really be used in the situation where you're using a tunnel boring machine but if you need it it is there again on our cross section We'll go and add our tunnel and there it is with our center up here 2.5 meters above so that's the plotted rails portion so just to finish off this session you remember that we were talking earlier about creating the sleepers or not creating them as in the normal method it would produce a very large file set that would take a long time to redraw and I suggested that maybe using the visualization package might be the better way to go. So I've produced one ready to have a look at here. And you'll notice here that we have the sleepers and the rails and the ballast all in, in here. Now this of course does depend on you having the visualization package and being able to do extrudes etc. The sky end here is a sky dome and then we've got extrudes in for the ballast. But this allows me to zoom in and out as quickly or slowly as I want to. Whereas if I had used the plotted rails option, then that would 
take a very long time each time I decided to do a zoom or a pan or in a 3D view move around take a long time to regenerate that view.